All right, so now we're going to be describing transformations that occurred within actual functions or graphs. Um, and we're going to need to know about parent functions. And what parent functions are is they are functions um, that are the most basic function of a specific type of equation. For example, a linear equation we all know is a straight line on the graph. The parent function of a linear equation is the most basic linear equation you can think of, which is the equation y is equal to x. This is the line that goes through the point 0, 0 and just has a slope of 1. This is the parent function of a linear equation. We've also learned about quadratic graphs or parabolas. And the most basic uh, quadratic or parabola here would be y is equal to x squared. This is a graph, uh, a parabola that goes through 0, 0 and just uh, essentially has an a value of 1. Um, absolute values, we have not done these yet, but these are V-shaped graphs, and the most basic form of a, an absolute value function is this one here, which goes through 0, 0, and has a slope of 1 going up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, and forming a basic uh, V-shaped graph. Um, cubic graphs is another one that we have not know, uh, learned. The most basic uh, Parent, the parent function of a cubic graph is, is y is equal to x cubed. This goes through 0, 0, just like all the rest of them do. A uh, square root graph is something we have not talked about yet, but the most basic form of a square root graph is y is equal to the square root of x, which again starts at 0, 0, and this is what the graph looks like. And then cube root graph is y is equal to the cube root of x, and this goes through 0, 0 as well, and this is the shape that that graph takes on. And so what we're going to be doing in these equations below is we are going to be describing the transformation that occurred within each of these equations. Uh, number one, you should recognize this as a quadratic equation, um, and what happened is we're, we're going to go, we're going to state our transformations from left to right. So the very first transformation that occurred was a horizontal translation. This horizontal translation, remember, horizontal starts with the letter H, so does the word hard. It's the hard one to remember. It looks like a positive 3. This is really a negative 3, meaning we went over 3 units to the left. So my first translation that happened was a translation three units to the left. And then the one on the outside is a vertical um, translation here. We went five units up. Vertical translations look exactly how they are in the equation. So I would then state that um, I translated five units up as well. All right. Um, number two, you should also recognize this as a quadratic equation. When it's written in this format, this minus one means that it was a vertical translation. In this case, it was one unit down. So, translation of one unit down. Number three, when the numbers on the outside, this is an absolute value function, when the numbers on the outside like this and it's being multiplied, that is a vertical stretch or compression. Since my k value is greater than 1 and this is vertical, then this would be a stretch. So this is a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. In number 4, this is a square root graph. And so when the numbers are on the inside of your square root, that's actually a horizontal translation. So my horizontal translation is really 2, positive 2. So that means I went 2 units to the right. So a translation of 2 units to the right. Number 5 is a cubic graph um, or equation here. And since there's no parentheses, this plus 3 is a, a vertical translation up 3 units. And then... Number six, we have multiple things going on here. 
when we have a negative inside, this is absolute value, but it's inside of my absolute values. So what that means is that there was a reflection in the y-axis. And then I have this minus two on the outside of my absolute values, which would mean I translated down two units. Number seven, this three is on the outside of my square root. If it was on the inside, it would be a horizontal stretcher compression. On the outside means it's a vertical stretcher compression. Since K is greater than one and it's a vertical stretcher compression, then this is actually gonna be a stretch because K is greater than one. So this is a vertical stretch by a factor of three. Now in number eight, my k value is on the inside of my square root, and that means it's a horizontal stretch or compression. So it's the hard one to remember. So since your k value is in between 0 and 1, you would think it would be a shrink. However, this is actually going to be a stretch because it's a horizontal a uh, k value here. And when you have a smaller k value when it's horizontal, then this is actually a compression. Or sorry, actually a, sh a stretch, not a compression. And when we describe it, we don't say that it was a horizontal stretch by a factor of one half. We use whole numbers here. So it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of two. Um, so we never use fractions when we're describing the, uh, the instance or the, the, the transformation. For example, in number seven, if this was g of x is equal to a one-third times the square root of x, we would just describe this as a vertical compression. Whoops. By a factor of three. So notice I'm not using the, uh, the fraction to describe what took place. We use the word stretch or compression to describe what took place. All right. Um, and for a vertical compression or stretch, if k is greater than 1, then it's a stretch. If k is in between 0 and 1, then it's a compression. Whereas it's the opposite for horizontal stretches and compressions. If k is in between 0 and 1, it's a stretch. If k was greater than 1, it would be a horizontal compression. All right. And then the next one, um, I am subtracting four on the outside of parentheses. That means I'm translating down four units. So that's what I will say. All right, moving on to the next page. So now we're given the parent function and a description of the transformation, and we're going to write the equation of the transformed function. Remember, absolute value, the parent function, is y is equal to the absolute value of x. So we need to do something to this to reflect the described transformation. This is saying a vertical stretch, um, a vertical shift up 5. So that would be a plus 5 on the outside of my absolute values. And a horizontal shift to the right would mean that I'm going to subtract three on the inside of my absolute values. Um, so, as remember, h is the hard one to remember. Horizontal is the hard one to remember. So even though I'm shifting right, I'm going to do a minus three, and shifting up is going to be a plus five. And this is my correct function. All right, number 11. Square root, the parent function of a square root is y is equal to the square root of x. Now, a reflection over the y-axis would mean that there's a negative on the inside of your square root, and a vertical compression by a factor of two. Compression would mean, for vertical, it would mean your k is in between zero and one, 
So my number is going to be a one half and a vertical compression is on the outside of your square root. So y is equal to one half times the square root of negative x. That is your correct function. Next one, cubic. So the, the, the parent function of a cubic graph is y is equal to x cubed. I'm going to write this a little bit different though when we do the transformations. And pay attention to this because quadratic is very similar. So I have a reflection over the x-axis. That means that the negative is going to be on the outside of our parentheses. And then I have a vertical shift down too, which also means it's going to be on the outside of our parentheses. So I have a negative. Then I'm going to do parentheses x. I'm not doing a horizontal transformation. So I'm going to do x minus 0 and then cubed. And then to reflect the shift down, I'm going to do a minus 2. Or you could have written it as y is equal to a negative since there's no horizontal transformation. An x cubed like this would satisfy the, the problem here. But when I ask you to type this into Google Forms, I'm going to ask for the first one. So this is your answer. All right. And then a quadratic, we're going to do y is equal to a reflection over the x-axis, or sorry, the y-axis would mean a negative on the inside of parentheses, a horizontal stretch by a factor of 3. Since it's horizontal, the stretch is actually, or the k value is going to be in between 0 and 1. So the k value is going to be 1 third. And then a horizontal shift left, which is also going to be in parentheses. So I'm going to have y is equal to parentheses. I'm first going to do the reflection over the y-axis. Then I'm going to do the horizontal stretch. Then I'm going to put another set of parentheses and do x, and now I'm going to take care of the horizontal shift left, which is going to be a plus 8. And then close our parentheses and uh, square that, and then close your other parentheses. So this is how that one would look like. All right, and then the next one, quadratic, I have a vertical stretch of 5 and a vertical shift down. A vertical stretch, your k value is going to be greater than one. So your k value will be five. And then the vertical shift down is on the op, uh, outside of parentheses, just like the vertical stretches. So I have y is equal to, let me be consistent with my, with my colors here. y is equal to, this is gonna be the vertical stretch. Now there was no horizontal stretch. So I'm going to do an x minus a 0 squared, and now I'm going to reflect the shift down 3. That's going to be a minus 3. Or if you wanted to write it as y is equal to a 5 times an x squared minus a 3, I would accept that as well. Um, but on the Google form, I would like you to reflect the, the first one here. Now we only do the zeros like I have here in number 12 and number 14. We only do that when we're dealing with cubic or quadratic functions. Notice in square root, I didn't write any zeros. And that's because um, your square root acts as like the, the inside and the outside of, of where things should be. Whereas if we didn't have the parentheses in 12 and 14, then um, we wouldn't know whether the 5 was on the inside or the outside of our parentheses or of our function. Okay, so I hope that makes a little more sense. All right, that brings us to the end of this lesson.